After a short three-hour flight from Milano, we landed in beautiful Porto. Once we set foot into the city, we discovered the lively bustle that defines Porto. The vibrant atmosphere left a positive impression on us, even though we arrived at night. Our accommodation was in the charming Ribeira neighborhood, with breathtaking views of the Duora River. It was absolutely charming, and I now consider it to be the best area to stay in on a trip to Porto. Our accommodation was called Holiday in Portugal, Ribeira Center No. 3 and we reserved it on booking. The apartment was in a traditional building, we had quite a large kitchen, and the place could even host four people. We were very pleased by our choice. Since we were near the river, when we left the accommodation every day, we were met by the also known hills of Porto. I'm not gonna lie, it was quite a challenge the first day to wander around Porto, going up and down hundreds of times, but I promise you will get quite used to it and even enjoy it by the end of your trip. Our first stop was this viewpoint on the Terreiro da Sé to admire the fabulous views of Porto by daylight. Here you can find the Cathedral of Porto, or Sé do Porto, which stands as a monumental symbol of history and spirituality. This fortress-like cathedral is a stunning blend of architectural styles. From Romanesque to Gothic and Baroque, reflecting centuries of history and artistry. This place offers a serene scape and breathtaking views over the city and the Duoro River. Then we went to grab breakfast at a restaurant that we know from Spain and were pleased to find out there's one in Porto as well. Its name is Honest Greens and it is the place to come for healthy dishes, savory or sweet breakfast, but also for lunch and dinner. They have their own coffee shop where you can indulge in specialty coffee and sugar-free desserts. Everything I tried here was exceptional. Time to try a staple in Portuguese cuisine, the pastel de nata, in the best place to have them, Mantegaria. I absolutely love the vibe of this place, people bustling to buy a pastéis de nata, the enchanting smell of cinnamon and egg cream, and the sight of hundreds and hundreds of delicious pastries. We always ate them with the classic cinnamon and powdered sugar, and alongside a shot of espresso. I cannot find the words to describe how delicious this is. You truly must try it. We're now walking towards this absolutely breathtaking spot that you just can't miss. The Louis I Bridge. It's just like stepping into a postcard. A massive double-decker metal bridge stretching across the Douro River, connecting Porto to Villanova de Gaia. 
Walking across the top, you're treated to the most amazing views of the city and the river below. Genuinely unforgettable. Whether you're catching it by day or lit up at night, it's picture perfect every time. Trust me, you don't want to miss this bucket list view. By sunset, Rua de Flores becomes a place to be for social gatherings and dinner dates. This popular street is filled with restaurants and bars. Independent musicians can be found at every corner, playing traditional Portuguese music and creating an enchanting atmosphere. The air is infused with the aroma of Portuguese cuisine, seafood and porto wine, while the street is bustling with people looking for the perfect spot to end their night. Today we thought we would try something different and we decided to make a day trip to the nearby lovely town of Aveiro. Sao Benzo Station is a true masterpiece of art and architecture, renowned for its stunning azulejo tile panels that depict various historical scenes of Portugal. It feels like the beauty of Portuguese culture greets you from every wall. We stayed at a queue for 15 minutes in order to buy our tickets and then rushed to catch our train. The tickets were 3.55 euros each for one way, plus 50 cents for the SIGA transport card, without which we couldn't buy our way back. If you buy your tickets online, you don't need the SIGA card. Welcome to Aveiro, the Venice of Portugal. Just a few minutes walk from the train station towards the city center, we encountered a Brazilian restaurant and we had to stop for a bite. The place was very traditional. We tried a quibe con queijo, which was minced beef with cheese filling, all deep fried and delicious. We also tried the pastel brasileiro de frango, which is a deep fried, very thin puff pastry wrapped around minced flavored chicken. They were both very flavorful and delicious. Down the street we saw a sweet shop called Pastelaria and had to try their famous ovo schmolish or soft eggs in English, which are bites of sweet dough reminiscing of biscuits, but much more moist, made entirely out of egg yolks. They are a treasured delicacy here and surprisingly, in my opinion, they do not taste like egg. Then we arrived at the beautiful spot that Aveiro is known for. Aveiro is nicknamed the Venice of Portugal for its picturesque canals and colorful Liceiros boats. The traditional Moliseiros often feature various colors and intricate designs, including popular cultural references, historical figures, contemporary celebrities. Here you can see Ronaldo's face painted on the boat, as he is a source of national pride here in Portugal. A boat tour on the traditional Moliseiros offers a serene and scenic way to explore Aveiro's canals providing a glimpse into the city's aquatic heart and its Art Nouveau buildings lining the waterways. We 
wandered mesmerized through the cobbled streets of Aveiro's historic center to admire its Art Nouveau architecture. The cobblestone street, the brightly colored houses, the salty air, the people make Aveiro one of the most beautiful small towns that I have ever seen. Capela das Almas, or Chapel of Souls. It is one of the most picturesque churches in all of Portugal. It is often visited by tourists because it features stunning blue and white azulejo tiles depicting saints' stories. Jardim do Moro is part of Vila Nova de Gaia and it's a popular place for tourists and locals to come and view the sunset over Porto. Vila Nova de Gaia is a city across the Douro River with its own rich history. Gaia is renowned for its port wine cellars, where for centuries wine from the Douro Valley was brought here to age and from where it was shipped around the world. Its waterfront is now lined with restaurants, bars and shops. Casa Portuguesa do Pastel de Bacalao is home to the historic port wine cellars, where wine used to arrive in barrels during Gaia's era of wine production and distribution. It was an extraordinary experience to visit this place during the enchanting sound of a magnificent 19th century pipe organ and ceiling to floor bookshelves. The woman was playing Disney-like enchanting songs that made you feel like you were in a fairy tale. We were delighted to try the distinctive taste of bacalao pastel, which is a beloved traditional snack in Portugal. It is made with shredded salt cod, bacalao, potatoes, cheese, eggs, all fried into small cakes or croquettes. The bacalao pastel is more than just a snack, it's a bite-sized piece of Portuguese culture and tradition.
We're saying goodbye to Porto and heading to grab our three-hour train to Lisbon. We had already paid our tickets online and rushed to the train station, but to our surprise the terminal was not at Sao Bento station, but at another station reachable by bus. There is a bus that comes every 20 minutes and makes about 50 minutes to that specific terminal. We rushed, but we finally made it onto the platform. So now off to Lisbon we go! Stay tuned for our next episode where we explore fabulous Lisbon and a couple of spots outside of town. Porto is an enchanting city, but one that might require a specialized guide to help you navigate its complex transportation system and discover the finest neighborhoods and restaurants. For those considering a trip to Porto, I've included a comprehensive 70-page digital PDF travel guide based on our personal experiences, available in the description below. This guide contains clickable links and provides access to my Google Maps list, which can be added to your own Google Maps app for easy and convenient use. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time from Lisbon.